Jesus Christ, the amount of unkept mornings you gave me. Oh, hey everyone, this is Joe from Action X. Welcome to What's on the Two, where each and every episode, individual episode of What's on the Two, like, God damn it, I was so close. Like, you don't understand how long it took me to get that logo on screen of my TV because my DVDs are locked away. Um, so, pardon the, um, the oh, I'm just going to turn it off. You saw the beginning, you saw the beginning, I don't care. Um... What was I going to know? Oh, yeah. So each and every episode, once on the tube, I talk about TV show. Um, usually I'm reviewing an episode of a, of a current TV show. Well, it is so far Nancy Drew, The Rookie, or recently I had just finished up High School Musical, The Musical, The Series. Um, right now we're currently on a break with The Rookie, but it's a little bit more of a, a longer wait than um, our other show. So I decided to, you know what, I want to give you guys a brief, brief overview of my history of television show. It's talking about some of my favorite ones that I could still remember of recent day. Um, I try to I try to do shows that I have a more recent memory of. I don't like doing shows that are more longer longer away because um, those are not fresh memories. Um, I don't want to like give something wrong. I rather have it fresh in my mind. So that's why I've opted to not do um, another thing I, I announced last year, but I didn't do it. But um, anyway, the point is I want to talk about today the Big Bang Theory and. That show, man, it it hooked me. It hooked me pretty good. Um, my history with that show, I didn't really know about the show for the longest time. Like I've heard about it in brief, brief, you know, you know, one-off, you know, statements around my the times before I actually had, had binged the show. And I think the one time I did actually get to see a clip of the show which kind of was a spoiler, and I, I should mention I'll minorly spoil some stuff from the show so you haven't seen it yet. Um, I wouldn't recommend watching this or skip to the end if you want to. Um, the thing that really, like, the first thing that made me notice about the show was that the when um, Sheldon and, uh, Jesus Christ, what's his name? Was it? And Amy, Amy first had sex. That was kind of like a big moment in the Big Bang community that this was the first time Sheldon lost his virginity, same with Amy, and it was... Um, it was hilarious, and I had no context in the show, but I still, I love that clip. I, f- I felt that maybe, maybe one day I'll have that moment. I won't spoil anything, but, um, okay. Anyway, so, um, that was kind of the first thing that noticed me, I got noticed on that show. Um, and then as I got older, and as I began to expand my horizons on, on network television, um, The Big Bang Theory was definitely something I was interested in seeing, since that it's a modern day show that's a modern day comedy that's still going on. I think by the time point I jumped on was on its 11th season. So I was really curious to see, like, how did this show, like, survive over a decade on TV? Where it's difficult to tell to even get to season 2, 3, 4, 5, let alone, at that point, 11. Um, the only other shows I could think of was Grey's Anatomy and Supernatural at the time. So... I have to, you know what? I have money. I have the spare allowance. Well, not allowance, but I have the spare financial means that I should be paying on my loans. I'm going to buy the entire first five seasons of Big Bang Theory. I thought easily I would maybe get that done in maybe like five, six months. I got that all done in one week. I kid you not. I finished the entirety of the Big Bang Theory in one week. One week. I was a I was a crazy man. I'm like, okay, the first episode was okay, and then for some reason, the more episodes I watch, I was like, okay, this is funny, this is good, and then it would turn to the point where I kid you not, on I think it was the last season I owned at the time, season five, I literally woke up at like nine in the morning. I had work at like I think three, at some point later in the afternoon, so I didn't even have to like I think this was during summer vacation, so I didn't even really need to do anything. Um, I had just. Stayed in my yeah. I stayed home, and I just binged as many episodes as I can before I had to go to work. Like I had videos to edit, I had other things to do, I had other responsibility. I said fuck all of them. I'm gonna watch the Big Bang Theory, and that was an unhealthy addiction I had. Like I told George about this um, when I was watching. It. It's like this show was so good. I literally ran to Target like the moment I finished season five and bought the the next three seasons, then season nine. And then I overpaid for ten, and then um, I think I think I couldn't jump on board season eleven because it was already too late. Like timetable wise, it just didn't work out. So season eleven came. Um, I had to wait till it comes on DVD. I literally spent the full fucking retail price on that because I wanted to be there to see season twelve live, which um, I did. I did, and it was just it was just an, it was for me an unhealthy like stretch of months where it was like I. 
I think I'm, I I was itching a lot because like I wanted to watch more episodes, more sh- more. It, it's like it's not that I think about it, like the show that I don't even remember that many of the best jokes of it. I remember the scene where the four are running away from the feeder crown when they supposedly have this limited edition film reel. Um, I can remember all the times I can remember sometimes Stewart got you know hassled and you know kind of the butt of the joke. Um, Howard being short, Roger's failure, woman's like, I can't remember certain traits and attributes. I can't really remember any specific jokes. And I get, and that's always the weird thing. Cause like, um, with other comedies that I want, like how I met your mother, like I can remember a lot of, I can remember a lot of things from that show. Same with the office and more or less with parks and racks. Like those had very memorable moments, but I really can't think of anything about the big bang theory. I think it's an addicting show. But by the time you really process it, it doesn't really have much... Else. I feel like at base face value, it is very much like... Again, I'm a very... Specific, my comedic style is very specific, where I like stupid jokes for some reason. That's that's just what I like. And that show had a plenty of, stu- of stupid jokes. And it made me laugh, it made me happy, and I just kept watching it. And, you know, it was just hilarious how the fact that these four... Um, Geeks, nerds, um, comic book enthusiasts, as I like to call them, um, somehow managed to get three like these attractive girls on their side over the la- the later seasons, and somehow one of these ridiculous adventures where you know I I wouldn't even believe anyone would even. And again, it's a, it's a TV show. It's meant to like you know drag it. It's meant to like you know be comedic and meant to be like soft silly sort of thing. And the fact they got so many big cameos, like they got Mark Hamill, they got Will Wheaton, they got um, Kevin Smith. They, what else did they got? They got freaking Joe Maggio. Joe Maggio. How? They got Stephen Hawking. He's not even an actor and he was on the show. Like, what the hell? It was just crazy. Like, this show was so big and it's like, it got more than 10 million viewers over the last few years of its airtime. It still kept that consistent level. It, it was just crazy. And... I just don't know. Like, I personally cannot think of a single joke for some reason on top of my head. Maybe it's because, like, the, the show's been over for now nearly more than a year. So maybe I just don't remember it. I just don't remember the value and the fun I have with those with that show. And it's crazy to still think about how, like, it's been so long. Like, I was, like, that, I, I was, that was unhealthy for me. It was not healthy to, like, ditch everything and just watch a TV show. Like, I think the last time I, I never, I really, like, the last time I did that was, like, Stranger Things 2. Where I came on Halloween, yeah, Halloween night, I literally came home from school. I did not stop. I didn't do anything till like I finished it around two p- a.m. And then I literally got a headache the next day because I just it was a lot, and I never did that. Like I remember, like now looking back at it, like I was very unhealthy doing that. And there's nothing wrong with you know binging a show. There's nothing wrong with that. People, plenty, plenty of people still do it. It's just for me, like the way it's like it t- took complete control of my life. Like as soon as I got home from work, I was like, okay, Big Bang Theory time. Like I didn't even, I didn't even think about the games I was had to play or you know do the videos I had to edit. Like I still just focus on the show. And uh, I, I guess my okay, so that, that kind of ended my brief my history with the show, how I got into it. Uh, what about the actual show, the actual context of the show, and. I think the simple premise was that, you know, when most comedies, it's like you always have the the one attractive dude, you have the quirky sort of attractive dude, but he's kind of like in the middle of the road, sort to speak, the best friend, um, the girl that everyone's pining for, and, you know, those sort of, the, the, the normal comedic tropes, you know, when it comes to an ensemble comedic um, cast, uh, uh, an ensemble co- comedic show, you sort of get those elements into into place, and I think with this show, it's like, it, it made the four, the core four very relatable because like these could be these are like the nerds the dorks the people that you know are very niche in their likes and interests that they wouldn't have the big friend circle that everyone would um have nowadays it they they don't and then they this very attractive young 20 year old woman moves in across the hall and everything changes like obviously they had some adventures beforehand but it was like really when she moved in like everything changed you know we have leonard which is like, it's weird, like, Leonard always seems like the main character, but then as time went on, Sheldon just became the face. And it's uh, it speaks volumes, considering that it was the actor's decision to leave the show, which kind of, like, was the main decision to, like, for everything to end, because he just wanted to move on, which totally makes sense. Like, if you did something for 12 years, you know, constantly would... Not to say there wasn't any change, like, Sheldon definitely um, matured and improved as the, the years went on, but there's always so much you can do with the same, like, comedic style, and, like, Without doing a whole 180, without destroying the character's um, true attentions, 
or his true um, self, there's only so much you can do after doing it for so long. So, I, you know, kudos to them for ending it the way they did. Like, and even for me, like, I'll get to this in a moment. Like, the ending wasn't really that satisfying to me. Like, it was satisfying in certain moments, but I feel like compared to other shows I've watched of this caliber, this the ending could have been a bit different. But maybe I was just, I had my I had my expectations way too high, and. Where was I going with this? So, yeah. And then, you know, again, it's like, it was so convenient to see Leonard think he had a chance with Penny. And it's just, it's the typical thing. Like, it's it's kind of unhealthy. It's also kind of like, doesn't really, again, it's a TV show. So, expectations are thrown out the window in terms of realism. But I guess if you, like, if someone gets to know the real you, I guess they'll eventually fall in love with that real you, which is kind of like what those two um, were like. But even in the later few seasons it was like a big questioning, considering the fact they didn't really have a real like stable relationship and like and I also took a Christian marriage class in uh, my college and I kind of learned a few things and it's like now looking back on this show it's like their relationship was kind of unhealthy at certain points considering the fact that Leonard never really like he always had to impress Penny regardless if they were married or not regardless if they were together or not like he would sacrifice a lot for her and she wouldn't really do much for him and, you know, it's it's also, like, two different characters in two different places in the world. Like, obviously, there's going to be some differences. Obviously, there's going to be some sacrifices there. But it just felt like a lot, personally, it did. Um, Sheldon, obviously, was a standout character. You really can't talk about Big Bang Theory without talking about Sheldon. Like, again, it's it's, it's all about co- comedy. It's all about connecting with the comedy style of the characters. And for his comedy style, it definitely spoke to me. Like, it was dry. It was very, you know, rude. It was very, you know sarcastic at moments it was like is he really serious is he not serious and it was like it was so hilarious it was like god i love this character i really did and the actor um he did a fantastic job playing you know making the character his own um i definitely speak volumes to raj you know the very desperate romance romantic who's looking for love and he he, he did have some chances like i think I, I, he was in a relationship for like a good couple of seasons I would have easily thought like they would have ended up together but they didn't i, I never really knew why they never gave raj like a proper like long-term love interest because even the last season was like they were close but and then you had howard which somehow became like he was trying to be the cool guy but he really wasn't but he was still funny like he 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 always felt like he had a chance with everyone which at times he did he really didn't and then they also like smoothly like this this could have easily been like another one of those shows where it's like let's just keep adding to the cast let's just keep adding no they never really did like there was a supporting cast you know that just kept popping in and out and they could have easily been promoted to main cast member but they didn't it was more. It was mostly um, we got Bernadita, Bernadita in a, I think it was season five or four. I forget what season was. Again, it, it's been a while since I've seen the earlier season, but she appeared very early on, and then you know she just kind of fit in. And then Amy, uh, yeah, she, I remember Amy. She got introduced in season end of two or three. It was either it was somewhere in the beginning too. It's so like then season four and five kicked out. It was like okay, let's add them fully because they they were gonna be the end game romantics for the character. So they they knew they were gonna have to you know keep them in. And they brought in a, a more different element to the group, considering the fact that these guys had never really interacted with females in terms of a long-term basis throughout their lives. So having that, you know, dynamic fill in, and it was like, you know, they all felt natural into their role, but it was also like, kind of like a little eye batting, like, oh, is this really happening? Is this really our lives? And again, life can change, and it's another, you know, example to, uh, to realism, where it's like, yeah, life can always change. Life always improves for the better, and it did for them. Um... I think that yeah. So the and then you can't you can't mention Big Bang Theory without you know the the constant Will Wheaton you know appearances. Never watched Star Trek. Never did. I've always been interested in Star Trek. I feel like that's a rabbit hole that I'm not ready to crawl, crawl into yet. I still have I still have a lot of Star Wars stuff to see. I still I'm, I'm still finishing off Clone Wars before the next season shows up. Um, yeah, but he, he was also a cool character, just being like playing an exaggerated version of himself, which I always love that. Like if you do it right, th- those those ter- those um characters are always the best. Um, again, it was really not much story because like, I think the first half of the, the show was about Leonard trying to get Penny and learning and Penny, you know, trying to figure out her place in the world and they kind of grew up from there. And then the second half was mostly about Sheldon and like, you know, how does he fit into like still being the self, um, self narcissistic self, you know, gloating person that he is, you know, how do we evolve from that? So I can definitely see Big Bang Theory be divided into two categories, the two seats, two separate parts and both parts are still great. Like, I, I did love... I did enjoy how Leonard and... Ben, like, again, I, I would have preferred a big fancy wedding, but I guess if it's their characters, like... Like, their relationship, it just happened. So, like, their wedding, it just happened. It kind of also surprises me that they never did a movie. Like, they, they could have easily did a movie on that. Um, 
the do like a more like the motion picture event or something like that. They could have easily done it. But I guess they. I guess the problem is when you make a movie based on a TV show, like the actors necessarily, it's difficult to transition back into TV show because that means reduce budget, reduce you know setting, reduce like big cameos and stuff like that. But either way, the show still worked in its best in the shows. Like they still got I, again, like I said before, they had a, a lot of big cameos throughout the whole the whole run, and, and I'm I'm amazed surprised surprised at that. And they also got to launch a franchise with Young Sheldon, which. I haven't seen it. Yet. I haven't seen Young Sheldon yet. I have the first two seasons on DVD, and it's been a little busy. Been busy to try and like get time to watch that show. Been very busy. Um, I forgot the rest. I forgot the rest of what I was gonna say. But um, I guess we can like we'll skip it to the ending. Like my my, my only criticism with the show, it's like and again again with any TV show, I'm gonna have some problems with it. Like even I think even like, the show I love the most, How I Met Your Mother. Even like I can't wait to do that entire episode. Like that's gonna be a very very huge episode in terms like in, that, that's gonna be a lot and the, the the way they end the Big Bang Theory was like it for me it felt like a little underwhelming where yes this was Sheldon becoming the like acknowledging he is a very different still similar but changed person but we like I don't know why like I always expected us to get a flash forward you know into the future like what happened to these characters you know years later and I guess maybe this is another example of, like this is the real world we we don't need to have that we don't need to be said by well what is their future like we're gonna assume what their future is they're gonna still be friends they're still gonna do like cr- cool thing get into some silly scenarios and you know it's gonna be the norm and you know we're never gonna see them on camera because the show's over and. I guess that's the thing that always bothered me. Like, I guess like expectations were just a little, for me a little bit too high on this twelve-year so- story, this twelve-year series. That I just, I mean, they got a happily ever after. I just wanted a very different, like, typical happily ever after. Like, let's see the future. Did they have kids? Did this character end up with this character? Maybe we don't need to see the whole seasons in between, but we could just assume that okay, this naturally jumped off of there, and we're happy about it. But we didn't. And it's not a criticism. It's not like, well, it is a criticism, but it's just like a disappointment that we didn't get to see that. Maybe they'll make a revival someday. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I highly doubt that. I, I, I don't think that enough money will pay them to. Um, yeah, yeah. So this was probably one of the best, one of the, um, it's an addicting show, but the problem is it's like, it's kind of forgettable in certain moments. Like, again, I completely forgot how the season, the, the series, like, and it's, it's also another factor, like, when you're binging a show, like, you're just watching in sequence and sequence and sequence, and unless it's, like, really groundbreaking, really shocking to the head, you're not gonna remember it, and that's true in my case, like, I can remember Leonard be like, um, Penny's ex-boyfriend, um, wanting Leonard to be the dad to his baby. That's literally one of the only things I can remember, then besides, uh, Amy and Sheldon, um, sex scene that apparently will forever scarred in my head. Um, yeah, I'm also, I was also, um, speaking of this point, like, I was actually surpri- shocked that we did not end with Raj, um, you know, being with someone, and I feel like it was another slap in the cheek where it's like, Raj was off, to, was gonna go off on his next big adventure, and then Howard just stopped and said, no, be here, be my best friend, he's like, okay. Literally, you don't, you could have, you could have had something special where you, where you were going, Raj. Something special. <sighs> Three, two, one. Now again, guys, this is a brief series review. I'm not doing a whole, like, analysis on the whole series without doing break by break, episode up by episode, season by season, which I'm never going to do. It's just, it's just, it's just impossible. Um, for me, it's, it's like, for this show, it's like, it's an addicting, like, it's like a drug. Like, you, you're addicted to it for a while, but then when you really think about it, it's like, was well, it good? And then, and then again, Big Bang Theory is a good show. It is a good show. I enjoy the hell out of it when I was watching it. It's just that it's, it's, it's this is going to be very much of a hot take, and I have to be open to this because again, I am the person who got way over. I got too like overhypedness killed me on Game of Thrones, so I have to be very critical here. I have to be very subjective here. The Big Bang Theory is a show that is addicting in the moment, but it's not. It doesn't have a lot of standout moments that I can't remember. Like. It just does not stick in my head that much. And again, it could be because it's a, it's a me thing. I, I A lot of things can't stick in my head that much. Like, once the TV season is over, the next one starts, like, I'm already forgetting stuff from Season 5 of The Flash, man. I'm on Season 6. Don't, don't, don't talk to me as Cicada bullshit. Um, but yeah. So, 
Again, I, I do enjoy the Big Bang Theory. Two thumbs up in the moment. It's a bingeable show. I, I recommend you binge you binge it if you can. Twelve seasons. It's very expensive. Twelve seasons. I still need to buy the twelve season on DVD, but it's like forty bucks. <laughs> I hate collecting DVDs at times, but I still love it. Um, like I love the show, but it's again another one of those like it's in the moment shows. When you really think about it, it's like it's it's kind of it's you get a little bit harder to remember stuff as time goes on, and it could be just because it's a massive show, so it's like I can't remember everything. But um, I guess it's it's just a show that had its moment, and you know, hopefully, young Sheldon is respecting it in its regards. Whenever we do, whenever I do see young Sheldon. You know, whenever I do have the time to spin season one, whatever that is. Maybe I'll give it to that show too, who knows. And you'll be right there alongside with me. So we'll figure it out. Overall, um, I enjoy The Big Bang Fairy. Big Bang Fairy is a, it's a great show. Um, again, this is all very brief. Very brief. I would love to do a whole, like, t- like whole big analysis. This is my very brief thoughts on my history with the show. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, again, this is the first time I'm doing this sort of thing. So let me know in the comments, how can I improve this? You know, what are your criticisms with it? Let me know. I'm always open to improve. I'm always open to this. constructive criticisms. I'm not, I'm not open to like hurtful comments. Now that I said that, I'm going to get them. So yeah. Anyway, guys, this has been Joe from Action X. Um, you were watching what's on the tube for the Big Big Fairy. Um, we always do shows. We always have episodes of What's on the Tube each and every week. Um, usually multiple ones. This week's a pretty big one. We got um, Nancy Drew's Return. We got Crisis and Infinite Earths. And we got um, a High School Musical Season 1 review. So check all of them out if you're interested. Um, but if you're just here for the Big Bang Theory, I really hope you guys, you know, let me know in the comments below. What did you think about the Big Bang Theory? Did you love the show? Were you like me? Were you, like, very addicting to it? Um, let me know. I'm always open. And the conversation, let's get the conversation going, guys. And um, that's going to do for me. So if you were always... If you like What's on the Tube, please subscribe to the ch- channel for more around What's on the Tube. Ring the bell for notifications. Like, favorite, share if you want to. And I'll see you guys whenever because I'm not, not going to do anything Big Bang Fury related in a while. So anyway, guys, have a good night. Peace out.